What's up fellow bookworms and welcome back to the channel. My name is Dylan and in today's video I want to share with you guys all the books that we bought on our recent trip to New York. This trip was a birthday celebration trip. My wife and I actually shared the same birthday, but honestly it was a trip that was pretty much destined to be centered around books from the beginning. As we were planning this trip, pretty much everything that we wanted to do involved books in one way or another. I'm gonna have at least a few videos coming out from that trip, so the links for those will be in the description when they are available. I don't know if they'll be uploaded at the time that you're watching this, but they will be down there when they are uploaded. But in this video, I just wanted to take a second to share all the books that we bought now that I'm back at home and have my official book haul ready to go. We bought 13 books in total and I'm pretty excited about them. So let's get right into it and I'm going to share the bookstore that I bought the book or books at because like I said, we tried to hit as many bookstores in New York City as we possibly could. The first bookstore that we hit up in New York City was the world's largest Barnes and Noble. I just got one book while we were at Barnes and Noble and it was Kings of the Wild. I have heard a lot about this book, not so much recently, but a few months ago I was hearing a lot about this book. It is a fantasy about kind of this washed up group of like ex warriors who kind of have to get the band back together and go on one final mission. I hear that it's very humorous and just a really fun time, kind of like a humor, fantasy, epic adventure kind of story which just sounds like a lot of fun to me. So I'm super excited to read this one. On the back it says, it's time to get the band back together. I don't know if you can actually read that, but I love a good like underdog comeback story mixed in with some humor. It sounds like it's going to be a really, really good book. And then while we were at Barnes & Noble, my wife actually picked up two books, the first being this book by R.L. Stein. She's been on a real R.L. Stein kick lately, trying to collect as many of his books as possible. This is Silent Night, which is obviously, I'm going to assume, a uh, Christmas horror story, and it's got the classic R.L. Stein Fear Street cover. It's a pretty cool retro looking book. And then keeping with the theme, she also got this book, Wreck the Halls, which is like five short stories of horror that are again, Christmas themed. This one looks pretty cool. And this looks like kind of like an indie book. Um, I've never heard of the publisher before. R-F-A-R -R Publishing. I'm not, I don't know if that's an acronym or not, but anyway. This is a pretty cool book that I might actually read myself. And then the second bookstore that we went to, unfortunately I didn't buy anything at the store itself. I'll talk more about that in a second, but it's definitely worth mentioning because it was just super, super cool. And just so I have a prop, uh, the second bookstore we went to was The Strand in New York City, which kind of just seems like an institution, honestly. It is a massive bookstore. They say that there are 18 miles worth of books in the store. I don't actually know how they calculate that, but I guess I believe it. Um, that was a really cool bookstore. It was really busy though on the day that we went, like insanely busy. We went on a Friday, so it was kind of our own fault. And it was just super crowded. And honestly, I was expecting it to be more of like a used bookstore, but it was mostly new books. And I don't know, it just combined with like the hecticness, hec hecticness of the store. And also like the way that it was organized. I just <laughs> didn't really see anything that I particularly liked. And just kind of wanted to bounce after a few minutes of being in that crazy store. So we didn't buy anything at the Strand itself, even though it was really cool to see and I'm very glad that we stopped in. But uh, I did buy something from the Strand, but I'll talk more about that in a second. The third bookstore that we went to was actually kind of unexpected. We were checking out a place called Chelsea Market, which was just kind of like a co-op kind of deal with like a bunch of little shops and a bunch of little uh, restaurants or like counter service places. But we were walking through there and all of a sudden we saw off in the distance a glowing sign that said books. So obviously we had to stop in and it was a really cool little bookstore. Uh, it wasn't that big. It was kind of just like a little stall kind of thing in this market, but 
It was neat, and they had a pretty good selection for being so small. The book that I picked up was this one, The Thursday Murder Club, which is a book that I've just heard so much about, especially now that the third book has come out. Uh, I've been talking about this book a lot because it's the book that I read while I was in New York City. I tried to do a little reading vlog while I was there, even though admittedly time was kind of short most of the time. If you want to know more about this book, definitely check out the other New York City videos that either are uploaded or will be uploaded very soon for more details about this one. But I will say real quick that it is a murder mystery where the cast of characters who are trying to solve this murder are elderly. They live in like a retirement community, a luxury retirement community, and they already kind of are interested in murder mysteries. It's kind of like a hobby, hence the name, the Thursday Murder Club. They meet on Thursdays to try to solve like old cold cases. Well, someone that they know turns up dead. So this is obviously their golden opportunity to try to solve a real life mystery for a person that they actually knew. And that's kind of where I'm at right now. <laughs> like I said, I was kind of short for time while I was in the city, so I didn't read a ton, but I'm really enjoying it. It's very witty, really fun, and hey, murder mysteries are kind of growing on me. So we went to Central Park the next day, which was something that we were really looking forward to. We had been to the city once before and didn't have a chance to go. And while we were walking there, once we were like getting to the park, the Strand actually had a really cool little outside booth set up. They had a couple of like little sheds that were filled with books. And then on the other side of the sidewalk, they had several tables of half price used books. And honestly, I was kind of more excited about this than The Strand itself, like their main bookstore. I just thought it was super cool and unexpected, did not know it was there. So I picked up an older copy of American Gods by Neil Gaiman. This is just like a classic of fantasy and science fiction that I have not read. So I'm super excited to read this, especially at half price. Um, don't know a ton about it. I know it's like a road trip kind of story where there are, I guess like the classic mythological gods, the Greek gods uh, are involved somehow while our main character makes this road trip, but honestly don't know a lot about it and I kind of like that. I don't really want to know a ton going into it. So that way I can kind of keep the element of surprise, you know? And then I also picked up this really cool copy of Lord of the Flies. It's got deckled edges, which is something that I really like, especially lately. They've kind of grown on me, but I really love the cover of this book. I have Lord of the Flies already in like a 50 year old mass market paperback that I probably wasn't going to read from. I just don't like mass market paperback paperbacks that much for whatever reason. So I was really happy to find this. I actually have not read Lord of the Flies. I know it's a classic that a lot of people had to read in like junior high, high school, but I have not read it. So I'm looking forward to that. And then my wife, very on brand for her, found this used copy of a two for one Fear Street book thing. Uh, there are two stories in this <laughs> and it was half off. So that was a pretty cool find for her. I am not really into Goosebumps that much, but maybe that'll change one day and I'll pick it up. But she was really happy to find this, so that makes me pretty happy. And then the next day we went to Brooklyn, which was something that was really exciting for me because I had never been to Brooklyn before. I really wasn't sure what to expect, but it was really neat. Um, having never been outside of Manhattan, I wasn't sure what to expect, but Brooklyn was really, really cool. And so were the bookstores that we went to in Brooklyn. We went to three bookstores in Brooklyn. The first was a place called Books Are Magic, which is like the most Instagrammable bookstore probably ever. They have a really cool mural on their uh, wall outside. Like when you're walking up to the bookstore, it's the first thing you see in big letters, Books Are Magic. Obviously we took a photo there because you have to. And something else that was really cool that I actually learned while we were there, my wife told me, she knew the whole time, didn't tell me, is that the bookstore is actually owned by an author, Emma Straub, who is the daughter of Peter Straub, who is kind of a classic horror writer. He wrote uh, The Talisman with Stephen King, which is a book that I just recently picked up. So I thought that was really, really cool. And obviously, like I said, she's an author herself. So while we were there, I didn't necessarily find anything that I liked. Um, it was kind of a smaller bookstore. And one of my pet peeves with bookstores, and I have no right to have any pet peeves with someone who owns a bookstore. I don't own a bookstore. So until I own a bookstore, I don't think I have a right to complain, but I'll do it anyway, is a lot of bookstores, especially smaller ones, really don't organize their books in any other way than like nonfiction in one section and then fiction in another section. And I feel like 
that's just way too vague, you know? Like browsing the fiction shelves, I feel like I have to look at every single book to know if there's something that I might be interested in or not. Anyway, that's just a me thing. So I I just didn't find anything. It was like I said, kind of a smaller store, but my wife did find two books that I think look pretty neat. The first was this little book, Tiny Nightmares. There's like I don't know, a hundred little stories. And I mean like little stories, like a page and a half, sometimes two pages. I think the longest one we found was like three, maybe four pages long of just like little scary stories, <laughs> just quick little bites of, of horror, which I think is a really cool concept. Um, we've read a couple of these together and they have been pretty good for the most part. There was like a couple that were just kind of weird, more weird than scary, but you know, it is what it is. This was a cool find, I thought. And then, of course, we picked up a book by Emma Straub since it was her bookstore. This is a signed copy, which I thought was pretty cool. And this is a book called This Time Tomorrow. Now, I'm just going to be totally honest. I have no idea what this book is about. I think it's like literary fiction, just like slice of life kind of deal. But uh, I do remember at the bookstore, they had one of those little cards in front of it. And it was like, uh, it takes place in New York City in the 90s. I think it's like a friendship story with some humor built in, if I remember the card correctly. But I love the cover and I'll definitely give it a shot because I really hadn't heard of Emma Straub before we went there, really. I mean, I had heard of her before, but I... I didn't really know anything about their books. So anyway, this is a cool find. And if nothing else, I absolutely love the cover. And then the second bookstore that we went to in Brooklyn was a store called the Center for Fiction. And as far as like the architecture and the way the bookstore was set up, this was probably my favorite bookstore we went to in New York City. It did have um, my little pet peeve thing of like just fiction and then nonfiction, which just makes it hard to browse for me. But the style of the bookstore, like it was just beautiful. It was right on the corner of like a semi busy intersection, but the whole entire front was like just glass. I don't know. It was just really cool as far as architecture goes. And it was just a really cool little store. Well, not really that little, but a really cool store. I did pick up one book there. My wife didn't find anything, but I chose this book, Demon Copperhead, which doesn't really sound like my cup of tea initially, but I'm a big Goodreads guy, like annoyingly so. If I'm at the bookstore and I see something that looks moderately interesting, I'm on Goodreads checking out reviews, seeing how many stars it has, almost to a fault. Like I almost annoy myself with that. But anyway, <laughs> I looked up this book and it is rated so well. I think it's like 4.5 three something stars, maybe even 4.5 stars with a lot of reviews. So the review in me won out, the review lover in me won out and I picked this up. It is like a uh, kind of like historical literary fiction. I think basically it's a retelling of uh, David Copperfield by Charles Dickens, which I have not read. So I really don't know like I know it's a retelling of that story, but I don't know what that story is. So I really don't know what this is about other than like a kid who was born into poverty, I think in the American South or uh, Appalachia, something like that, and just his struggles in life. It is an Oprah's book club pick for 2022, which I've never read one of her picks before. So that's pretty cool. But anyway, love the cover. It's rated so well, even though it's not really something I would usually read. I am excited to eventually get to this book. And then the third and final bookstore that we visited in Brooklyn is one that we didn't buy anything at, unfortunately, but it was called Greenlight Books. It was kind of the end of the day when we went here. We were tired. We had been walking all over Brooklyn. So admittedly, we didn't really spend as much time in there as I probably would have liked to, but it was a cute little store that had a pretty good selection of books. If we had had more time, I probably would have picked something up, but we just browsed and had a really good time doing that. And then the next day, at least I think it was the next day, if not the next day, the day after, we went to a bookstore called McNally Jackson, which, okay, if I'm honest, probably really was my favorite bookstore. Uh, the Center for Fiction in Brooklyn was really cool. Maybe they're tied, I don't know. But this store had like the perfect location. It's kind of like a local chain. I know that there are at least three or four stores around the New York City area. The one we went to was the Seaport location, which was like downtown, kind of near like 
sort of like Wall Street area, uh, but it was right by the water, and it was just it was just a really cool experience to go there. It was like kind of a foggy day being right by the water, and then the storefront is kind of like seafront kind of style, like old kind of, I think of like old English, like fishing town style. I don't know. Anyway, the storefront was cool, but then the store itself was just really, really neat. It didn't look like that big of a store from the outside, but when you walk in, there's two stories and it was massive. And they actually organized the books by genre. So it wasn't just fiction and nonfiction. There was a thriller and mystery section. There was a literature section. There was a classic section. There was a science fiction and fantasy section, which is just something if it hasn't been made clear already, that I love. <laughs> so it was just a really fun time walking around the bookstore, seeing everything that was in there, taking in the sights, taking in just the charm of the store itself. We picked up a couple books while we were there. Um, I found this book, which, I mean, I've seen it everywhere that I've been, every bookstore that I've been. I finally decided to pull the trigger on it while we were at this particular bookstore, and that is Babel or Babel, I don't know the correct way to pronounce it, but like I said, I've seen this book everywhere. I've been seeing it all over BookTube. It's supposed to be really, really good. Honestly, I hesitated with this one because I don't know what it's about. <laughs> it's a pretty thick book to not really know at all what it's about. It's marketed as like a dark academia, but honestly, what does that even mean? Um, I have no idea. If you know, let me know in the comments below what dark academia means. But uh, I know it has to do with language and like translating, but I know it can't just be about that. Like there's gotta be something going on. And that's the part I don't know. <laughs> um, I did read the synopsis, but I forgot it entirely pretty much. Um, so yeah, I'm just gonna be totally uh, surprised when I read this, I guess, because I don't know what it's about. But according to the internet, it is very, very good. And then while we were there, my wife picked up this. It is a little like manga called With a Dog and a Cat, Every Day is Fun. And there's a little one on there, so I assume it's going to be like part of a series or is a series already, I don't know. Um, and this is, I mean, we have a dog and a cat, so I think that's why she picked it up. But I don't know what this is about at all. Um, but there are like pictures of the author's real animals, I think, which is pretty cool. I'm going to try to show you and see if it'll focus. Look at that little dog. So, I mean, that's cool enough for me. <laughs> I don't know if I'll actually read it, but I like it. Um, so, yeah. And then finally, while we were at the airport about to come home, we saw a stand for the strand. That was hard to say at the bookstore. And I'm telling you, the Strand has a monopoly, it seems like, on books in New York City. They got Central Park, they've got LaGuardia Airport, probably JFK, and I think there's another airport too. They've got their massive store. Anyway, we saw that, and even though we were almost a little bit late for our flight, had to stop and check it out. And I'm glad that we did because they had this book like on display, and I have never seen this book before. I think it just recently came out. It's called Tommy and the Order of Cosmic Champions. Honestly, I just bought it for the cover. I'm gonna try to make the camera focus on the cover because probably one of the coolest covers I've ever seen. It's kind of glossy. I don't know if it's showing up, but kind of glossy and just looks really, really cool. Uh, again, like I said, I'm a Goodreads guy through and through. And I kind of went against my nature here because I checked it out on Goodreads and it was rated really well, like four and a half stars, but there were only like 30 reviews or something crazy like that. And usually that would be a no-go for me, but the cover was too cool not to buy this. And the 30 people who reviewed it did love it. So, hey, I'll take their word. <laughs> um, I know that this is kind of like a... Not like a copycat of, but it seems heavily inspired by Ready Player One. What I remember of the synopsis is there's a kid in Ohio who loves to play this video game. And this particular video game has a contest where it's like create a character. And if your character is the best, we'll choose it. We'll put it in the game kind of thing. Well, the main character does that. He creates a character. And unfortunately, they do not choose his character. And somehow, and this is kind of where there's a disconnect because I don't know how they're linked, but somehow 
that sends him spiraling into uh, something, the plot, <laughs> whatever the plot is. That sends him spiraling into some sort of mission or misadventure or something like that. So that sounds pretty fun. I mean, it's a good setup. I, I think it takes place in the 80s, which is pretty cool as well. So if nothing else, it will look very cool on my bookshelf. <laughs> all right, there they are. All 13 books that we bought while we were in New York City. Let me know in the comments below, have you read any of these books? What did you think of them? Are any of these books on your TBR? Let me know. I know there are a couple on here that are super popular, a couple that are not, uh, specifically like Babel and Demon Copperhead. Have you read those? Have you heard about them? Let me know if you're excited to read them, if you hated it, whatever your thoughts are, <laughs> I would love to hear them. As always, thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video.